God is a God of reversals. He can reverse things on a dime that appear to be irreversible. So God can change things on a dime. You think your boss has the final say. You think the powers that be have the final say. You think those unscrupulous co-workers who are plotting against you have the final say. You think because they have the name, have the money, have the position, they have the final say. They don't have a thing unless God gives it to them. See, God has an override button that can take what Satan has planned against you. People he's raised up against you. Circumstances that look not in your favor. Nobody, I don't care who they are, has the final say so over a Christian living by the Spirit in the will of God. Nobody. Which means you never live a threatened life. You're crying one day and you're laughing the next. Oh, the Bible says, sorrow may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, you may be crying today, but don't think that's how it's going to be when you wake up tomorrow, not when God has jumped into the situation. Because God is a God of reversal. Martin Luther King saw a reversal. He was in the Birmingham jail. But you go to Washington, D.C., you'll see a monument. Nelson Mandela had a reversal. He was put in jail, but then he became head of South Africa because God is a God of reversal. Oh, but there's one reversal bigger than all of that because Satan thought he had Jesus on the cross. When he hung him high and stretched him wide, it looked like Satan had won. But early Sunday morning, just a little while before day, God raised Jesus up and he said, all power is in my hands. God is a God of reversal. So you hang on to him even though Satan is throwing dirt at you.